Marvel Studios, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier no doubt has some of the most high-flying VFX in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is why I wanted to talk to VFX supervisor Eric Levin. Hey, Eric. Hi, Lorraine. Now, the series has some incredible action sequences. What was your overall vision for those action sequences in the show? What I really wanted to do for the big action sequences was, as much as possible, make things feel like they're grounded in reality. So obviously we don't have Anthony Mackie flying around in a real jetpack with real wings, but we want to make it feel like if he was, how would we film that? There are people who can actually fly. You have wingsuit pilots who jump out of airplanes. They all have little helmet cameras. Kari Scoggin, the director, really wanted to bring that language to our show as well. So we actually have many shots where we've got an action cam in front of Sam's face or on the wingtip. And as he moves, we see the entire world move around him and things like that. And um, that was a really interesting new visual language to bring to the show that we haven't brought before. I think that new visual language is really clear, especially when you look at other MCU characters who also fly. But what makes Falcon's flight so unique? It was important for us to have Falcon feel like a different character. There are so many other characters in the MCU that fly, like Iron Man, for example. Um, he flies, but he has a different center of gravity because his engines are in a different place than Falcon's. Um, he can hover in a way that Falcon doesn't necessarily hover. So we wanted to make sure that Falcon felt different um, and that we weren't sort of copying the flight patterns of other, other heroes. Well, let's talk about where we really see this happening in the show, which is that big opening sequence. It opens the show, so you're sort of dropped kind of right in the middle of it. Sam is kind of contracting with the Air Force. There's a terrorist organization out there that is, they think is going to kidnap an American Air Force plane. And so they're sending Sam in to go make contact with that plane, make sure everything's okay, they've lost contact with it. Then, what he doesn't know is that these guys are expert wingsuit pilots, and they actually strap Captain Vassant to them and then jump out of the plane. So it was just sort of this amazing moment, like I didn't know they could do that. So. Now Sam has to chase after these wingsuit guys. So the first thing that we see is Sam in the airplane and then he drops out backwards. How did you create that shot? Yeah, that was a relatively straightforward shot. We've seen that sort of thing done before, so we wanted to make sure we put our stamp on it. Basically, he's in the real plane. There are pads below him. There's a blue screen surrounding the plane. Um, and then when he falls out of the plane, somewhere in the middle of that process, we basically blend to a digital version of him. Ideally, the effect is seamless. You don't know where, you know, Anthony starts and where the digital version begins. That sequence is so wild. You really can't tell what's real and what was shot practically. How did you shoot the scene where Falcon lands on the plane? Is that shot in the air? Not with a plane in the air, but with a plane on the ground. That was something that we, you know, we pre that, so we saw like the sort of video game version of it where we had, you know, Falcon kind of coming in and just sort of landing on the plane's cockpit. And we talked with the stunt coordinator and the riggers and figured out, you know, I think we can do that for real. We're going to be in an Air Force base. We have a real plane. Um, and they would wire Anthony up on like a traveling harness that would actually fly him into the shot. And Anthony really did it. He actually flew onto the nose of an aircraft. Uh, in that particular shot, I think we replaced him completely at the beginning of the shot because we didn't like the trajectory at the beginning. And then we blended to real Anthony landing on the nose of the aircraft. So the next crazy thing that happens is there are these wingsuit flyers weaving between the canyons. Did you work with real wingsuits? Not only are we working with actual folks in wingsuits, but Captain Vassant is strapped to one of the wingsuit pilots. In real life? Yeah, and so that was the sort of thing, like, you know, in the story, he's strapped, you know, in the story, yeah, he's gonna strap him and he's gonna jump out. And I was talking with the stunt coordinator and he said, oh yeah, yeah, we can do that. Blah, blah, what? What? Oh yeah, no, we do it all the time. We, uh, you just strap a guy to another guy and he'll just hold on real tight and he'll jump out of the airplane. <laughs> Anytime you can do anything for real, you wanna do it for real. I think what's really important, in this, especially in a sequence like this, is even if, I don't know, 70%, 80% of the sequence is done on the computer, it's, it's CG, but having enough of it to know that it's real and to be able to sell people, oh, that, they did that for real, that's a real guy jumping out of an airplane with someone strapped to his back. If you have enough shots in there that are real, I think it kind of makes the rest of the sequence believable. Then you start to question, wait, what's real, what's not, what's digital? And if you can't tell, that's the goal. Then, then it seems like maybe it, maybe it was all done for real. The show is action-packed from start to finish, and as we arrive at the series finale, we finally see Sam's heroic debut as Captain America. Could you talk us through that big final scene? 
Yeah, so everything kind of comes to a head at the end. Um, in our last episode, the Flag Smashers have basically, you know, they've sort of become radicalized at this point. Basically, they just take a bunch of hostages. So um, one of the Flag Smashers takes a bunch of hostages in a helicopter and is flying them all over New York City. Then there are two other trucks that are hijacked by the Flag Smashers. So everybody converges here. And at one point, Carly is just like, you know what, I, I, I can't take this anymore. And she's gonna take one of the trucks full of hostages and just drive it into a construction pit. And it looks like the truck is gonna hit the ground, but at the last second, Captain America shows up and saves the day. I remember hearing from Malcolm Spellman, the, the writer, that he really wanted to make this iconic moment of Sam as Captain America saving this truckload of people and pushing it back to safety, that that was really important to him. To have a, a black superhero you know, do that was really, was really a powerful moment. It really is such an impactful moment. How were you able to bring it to life with VFX? It's sort of the same process. Again, it starts with the page. We'll start talking about, okay, let's, let's look at some storyboards. What are the shots gonna look like? Are these wide shots? Are they tight shots? If they're tight shots, maybe we can do it on a blue screen stage. Can we get one of these trucks? Could we you know, get it in a way that Anthony Mackie can actually get his body into it and get the performance that we were looking for? And so special effects actually came in and rigged up one of these giant bear cats in a way that the Mackie could actually push against and pretend he was pushing it up. We start figuring out what, what can be done for real from all the other departments who say what they can do. The pit itself, for example, was shot over a, um, I think it was three story parking garage. And three stories doesn't seem that dangerous when you're at the top. You want to make sure that if you fall in there, that there's no chance of survival. So we might be able to film at this practical location, but we might need to take it over in visual effects and make it seem deeper. So we'll do some set extensions. It's definitely an absolutely amazing moment in the show, but I'm curious, do you think there are any moments that people might have missed? What folks certainly missed is that um, the outfit that Captain America wears, he has this cowl that I know everybody at Marvel is very specific about because it's based on the look of the cowl in the books. What I learned from the costume department though is that what they want is really, really hard to get in real life. I don't think there are any fabrics that can do exactly what they want, which is it needs to be stretchy, it needs to hug the face, but it also has to feel thick like leather, but it needs to flex like spandex. So what they ended up doing was they, they built something as close as they could possibly get it, and then depending how Anthony turned his head, you might get a huge wrinkle back here, or the cowl might separate from his face. So in many, many shots, we actually replaced that cowl so that it would stay snug to his face and look the way we wanted it to look. There are seams in the back of the cowl. And as we know, there are no, there are no seams or zippers in, in the superhero costumes. So those all had to be replaced and touched up. There are so many details that go into creating the VFX for a series like this. But what was your absolute favorite aspect of working on the series? Certainly working with these huge action sequences was my favorite part of the show uh, because there's just so much that goes into this stuff. There's so many moving parts. You get to work with so many different people, so many different departments, and bringing everybody's creativity to the table, working in, with just these amazing people to make these action sequences better and better and better was really, really fantastic. Some of these scenes, we were working on them for over a year, and it was just really neat to see them from the very beginning all the way through to the very end. Wow, Eric, it's been quite a ride. Thank you so much for talking to us. And everybody, be sure to go watch all episodes of Marvel Studios' The Falcon 